this day here on the Average Outdoors channel. I've been flinking around on my range here, shooting the Taurus TX-22. I finally got this gun to run as it should have from the factory. It took a bit of work on my part, but it is finally a reliable shooter. If you saw the original video I did on this gun, realize that it was literally an unboxing review. I took that gun from the gun store, I placed it here on the table, and I just wanted to see how it would function. And it did not work. I was continually having failures to extract, failures to feed. I was having stove pipes. I was having the magazines not function as they should. And if you look at the comments, <laughs> they range from, you got a lemon, send it back, all the way to, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're doing, and everything in between. The reality is, this gun needed some help, it needed some love. I've done some work to it now, and it is finally a good shooter. So here's why this gun was malfunctioning. Now, it had nothing to do with the ammo that I was using. In fact, I've been almost feeding this a steady diet of Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is cheap. It is not the greatest ammo. I know that. That's why I know that if this gun will reliably function on Remington Thunderbolt, it's going to feed the majority of other 22s out there. It also had nothing to do with me using the follower tabs because if you do it correctly and avoid rim lock, you can reliably load your magazines using the tab just as I've done. You'll see me load the exact same way. That was not why these magazines were failing. They were failing because they were dirty, they were gritty, they were nasty. I've taken care of that and now they function 100% loading it with the tabs. A lot of people say that you have to load it like a center fire. You have to push down and do that and you just rape your thumb or use the little loader. I don't have any interest in carrying around the loader when I go out to the range and this works just fine. Absolutely fine. I've about 500 rounds through this gun now loading it this way. Zero issues. So after my attempted break-in of this gun still did not yield the desired results for liability, what did I do? Well, I actually took a Dremel, I took a buffing wheel and some buffing compound, and I hit up the frame rails. I took a little bit of the burrs that were apparent on the frame rails. I polished them all out to a, you know, nothing major. I didn't reprofile anything. I wanted to start really small and see if this would work. So very light polishing on the frame rails, and I also polished the feed ramp of the barrel. And that was it. Put it back together, took some shots with it, and it was still jamming now it did take care of all the failures to extract so i was no longer having stove pipes however the magazine was still having that nose dive issue where this front bullet was hitting the front of the magazine plate so i knew that my issue laid with the magazines themselves and no longer with the gun so to fix the magazines the very first thing i did was completely take them apart after I took them apart, I cleaned them really good with soapy water and a brush. They were filthy. They were absolutely dirty. There was so much debris in there. And you could see why the follower was having trouble going up and down reliably. So what I did then was take a product called Slick Mist. I'm pretty sure it's by Lucas Oil. It's actually an automotive hard wax. And what that does is it acts as a dry lubricant to lubricate your magazines without attracting dirt and dust. And it works amazingly well. That's all these magazines needed. And now they function 100%. 100%. Put the ears on. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. Now, as I said, that slick mist is a dry lubricant, so you can actually take your magazines, drop them in the dirt, pour a little dirt in there if you want, a little bit, not too much now, blow it off, you are good to go. There's no dirt that's going to stick to this. Now, I'm going to load up with some of this Federal Auto Match. It's not as hot as Remington Thunderbolt, but this gun will still eat it up all the same. Again, loading it the exact same way I did in that original video using the tabs it's just so much easier i don't know why you wouldn't want to do it there's even a window here you can use on the magazine itself to make sure you're not having any sort of rim lock occur i'm gonna load this up pop off a few more rounds so now that i've taken care of all the functionality aspects of this gun how do i like it 
Well, like I said in this first video that I did, the ergonomics on this gun and the high capacity magazines are really what sold me. That along with the price. You just can't beat the price of these. They are fun guns to shoot. The trigger, it's not great, but for close in work, it's perfectly adequate. <laughs> Missed one there. Not too bad. You know, that's 10 yards at a four inch plate. And it just, it takes care of those with no issues. Now, while the sight picture on this gun is absolutely fine, I will say the sights are somewhat cheap. They're all plastic. They kind of give you that impression of an air gun, like a Crossman air gun. And if you'll notice, I had to drift my sights all the way to the left to get this thing to shoot on center. If you watch that first video, I had to do some pretty severe Kentucky windage to get on target. And to get it on target, I had to max it out. It actually can't go to the left anymore. So that's a little bit of, it's not a, a con really, because it is officially sighted in. It shoots straight, but it doesn't have a lot of adjustments built in. And it had to use the entirety of it just to get it on target. But the white dots, perfectly adequate for what I'm doing up close. This gun does a lot of things really well. In fact, I really only have one issue with it, and that's how inaccurate it is. And it's not to say that it's a completely inaccurate gun, because I have definitely shot 22s that just keyhole and fling these little bullets all over the place. This gun shoots straight, but as you start to stretch in the distance, you'll notice how inaccurate it is. Those inaccuracies become more and more apparent the further out you get, for sure. Now. With this gun, and I know that this is, uh, it's a little bit different, it's kind of an apples to oranges, it's a fixed barrel gun with a little bit longer sight radius, but I have shot so many different 22s in the past, I actually used to, our range, uh, I used to work, I was a range officer at an indoor shooting range, it's 22 only, so I've shot just so many different 22 guns, so I know what makes for an accurate 22 and ones that just don't shoot quite as well. When you're up close and personal, you know, ranges between, you know, 10, 15 yards, you don't really notice it with this. As you start to stretch it out to 25, 50, even 100 yards, it just, it's hard to connect with this gun, especially in comparison with a gun like this. So let me show you what I mean. Now I've got two magazines, 10 rounds each, both of them loaded with Federal Auto Match, and... I know that Federal Auto Match shoots pretty accurately in both of these guns. So I have a target out there at 25 yards. It's that paper target. The one in the middle has not been shot at yet. I'm going to take 10 shots with the Taurus, and then I'm going to take 10 shots with the Ruger, and you'll kind of get a good comparison between what I know to be an accurate gun and what I've come to decide is not the most accurate gun. Now, we'll do this on camera, but... Uh, it, I'm going to take my time, so I'll probably end up speeding up the film when I do this. Alright, Ruger's up first. Twenty five yards. I'll shoot this one at the left side of the target. Taking my time. for that one let's go take a look so there's my 10 shot group with the ruger i don't know if that one's new one two three four five six seven eight nine probably is so let's go a four inch group at 25 yards and with the taurus i'm going to aim for the upper right side of that target and let's see how i do here
That's the first jam in this in about 500 rounds or so. Maybe I'm limp wristing a little bit here. Go check it out. Well, I think I'm keyholing. Yeah, that's probably why this has not been the most accurate gun for me. Look at this. You know, I was holding here. One, two, three. That's is that a keyhole? I don't know. I don't know. There's my Ruger rounds. I mean, I think this gun's keyholing on me. Wow. But look at the accuracy. I mean, I don't I don't know if I got all 10 rounds on paper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm, that's a new one. Nine. I mean, dang. That's why this gun cannot shoot a distance at all. That is the first time I've actually taken that gun and put it on paper at anything further than 10, 15 yards. So really explains why it's been such an inaccurate gun when I go to stretch its legs, because I'm pretty sure those are keyholing. So for example, let's take the Ruger and let's take a couple shots at hundred yards and see if I can connect with the plate. And even when I don't connect with this gun, I can see the rounds impacting and they're all within kind of a two, two and a half foot spread around that target. But I can usually get one or two per magazine connect at 100 yards. There's one. Okay, I found where the one There's two, is that the last one? Nope, not more. Right below it. There it is. A little higher hold. Ah, oh, quick. <laughs> a little bit of flinch there. But I can connect at 100 yards with this gun, usually a few times per magazine. Now, when I tried to do that same thing with the Taurus, it is, I'm not joking, a seven foot, eight foot circle. And you can just see you're holding on target. One lands four feet to the right, next one lands four feet to the left. One will drop into the dirt, you know, 20 yards in front of the target. It's just not an accurate gun. Let's take some shots with the Taurus, and I just know that I will never hit it. <laughs> that was actually really close. I got it. You know, these are not doing as bad. Oh, there's one way in the dirt. You know, that's not nearly as bad as it was doing yesterday. And I'm now I'm wondering if those were Thunderbolts. I'm wondering if the Federal Key holds out of this and the Thunderbolts don't. I'm going to put some of the Thunderbolts on paper and see what happens. So that was actually really interesting. With the Thunderbolts in this, they were holding a half-decent pattern at 100 yards. That was not my experience just uh, the other day when I was shooting Federal out of this gun at 100 yards. And so let's test Thunderbolt on paper. And I just want to see if they're keyholing or not. It could just be that this gun really, really hates the Federal. I'll load them up here. Get some rounds on paper. So I've got a few rounds in the magazine here. Remington Thunderbolt. I'm going to shoot at that same 25-yard target. It's a name for the middle of it, and if I don't see any rounds, 
that have keyhole marks in them, I'll know that, well, it may be new. And if they do have keyhole marks in it, then I know the gun just, it just keyholes. Let's see. I'll aim for the middle and see if I can get anything that resembles a group here. <laughs> My target just fell over. <laughs> Let's go set that back up. It fell over. <laughs> All right, so my support was in the middle and it keeps getting shot, so I move off to the right. Shouldn't have any more issues now. Get these last four or five rounds on paper. Let's go see what it did. Saving dead center hold, and you can see these ones here are all new. And that one definitely isn't keyholing. Now some of these, okay. a little bit hard to tell. That one's not keyholing. That one looks like it probably did keyhole a little bit. Hard to say. Here are the Ruger ones for comparison. You can see this one almost has a little bit of a tear in the front. So nothing dramatic like these very apparent keyholings going on with the Federal. But still, even with the Remington holding here, you know, just not a really great group. I mean, you know, it's almost a 12 inch, 10 inch group at 25 yards. At the end of the day, do I still have full regrets? <laughs> full regrets. Buying this little 22, I don't. In fact, I actually still like it, even though it's not the most accurate gun. You can see that when I was working the seal close in, I had no problems connecting at 15, 20 yards or so at the seal plates. For seal speed seal competitions or other USPSA type of competitions, this thing would be absolutely accurate enough. It still does have those keyholing issues with the Federal, so I'll know that, I guess, not the best... Once you start <laughs> spreading its legs, not the best ammunition for this gun. Remington Thunderbolt still has been 100% reliable in this post the work that's been done. It's still a fun little gun to shoot. Now, if I'm going to bring one gun out to the range, is it going to be the Taurus or is it going to be the old Ruger? I enjoy shooting this gun a lot more. I like shooting the gun at distance. I can shoot this gun faster. It's got a better trigger. It recoils less. I have more fun shooting this gun than I do the Taurus. So I'll probably still keep the Taurus. It's a great trainer, especially for new shooters. Uh, it is fun for me to shoot. You know, the high capacity magazines are still just a blast to come out and, and have some fun shooting at the range, but at least it is a gun that functions finally. And that's how I did it. I showed you very simple modifications that made a world of a difference. So thanks for watching guys. Take care.